So today on Mickey J White Hat, we're going to pull apart an APK file. What's that you ask? It's an Android file, one of those packages you download from the Google Play Store. So stick with me and see after the break, we pull apart an APK file. Welcome back to Mickey J White Hat. Be sure to subscribe, ring the bell and leave me a comment. Tell me what you want to see in up and coming episodes. But today we're going to pull apart an APK file. So first of all, let's grab some tools. First thing I would do is download APK tool. So we go up and then download that tool from ibotpeaches.github.io slash APK tool. And I'll put this down in the description down below. Now that's the first tool we need. The second tool we need is Dex2Jar. So we go to sourceforge.net slash project slash Dex2Jar and we download that tool. The third we need is a Java decompiler. So over to java-decompiler.github.io. Download those three programs. So the next thing we need is an APK file. Now we could go to the Google Play Store and download something or we could just Google APK mirror or other mirrors and we can find ourselves numerous downloadable APK files. All kinds of things from calendars to messengers to dumpsters to VPN tools, all kinds of things. First thing I'm going to do is just select one. So I happen to select this one here, the Bodoink Video Downloader. And I just download that APK tool to my hard drive. Now once I've got that file on my hard drive, I am then going to play cautious and I'm going to use NVisio APK Scan. And I'm going to upload this tool into that scanner to see if it carries any malware. And lo and behold, it does. Oops, I've downloaded a virus. Now the risk rating on this is confirmed malicious. As you have a look down through this list of things, um, it's got obviously the hash file, so you can compare it to other files that it's checked in the past. But you can actually see the permissions it changes and looks at. You can see the services that it uses. You can see the scan results, and the various names of the viruses detected as, and you can have a look at the various URLs that are encoded into the product. Um, some of these are interesting. They're all obviously ads, taking you off to all kinds of ad servers, including Google Ads, which is not so bad. And as you scroll down, you've got some screenshots. Wow, hang on, we've got lots of URLs there. Um, then we've got some screenshots. Now, the way this does this is it randomly stomps around inside the app. It actually runs the app just so that the app's not AI aware and knows that this is actually a human being or a computer that is actually stomping around in it. So it's pretty random uh, just to see what it pulls up. Then you've got the disk activity tells you what it actually does. Uh, the network activity. So it's going off to this particular IP address here on a HTTPS port. And you can also see if it's going to phone anybody, SMS anybody, um, any encryption it uses, and any other information. Now, you can also download the log from the actual experience that it's had, uh, and you can look at that yourself later. And I will actually put a link to this in the description as well. One of the things I like to do, just like I do with computer viruses, is grab one of the names, and then grab that name, put it through um, Google or something like that, and find out a bit more about the particular malware I'm dealing with. Now, in this case, I've come up with the semantic website with android.airpush. So apparently, it's all about rotating ads and giving me ads and things like that. As you scroll through here, it tells you a bit more about it. Um, you can find out all kinds of stuff about this particular app and what it will do to your phone or to your tablet or whatever you've installed this Android app onto. Now, that's all well and good. You've seen me now go through the website. So... Um, why did I download those tools? Well, we're going to decompile it and have a play with it. So let's just say that you haven't done that. Then the quick steps were going up to a mirror, locating a file I wanted to download, quickly run it through the scanner, find out, yep, it's malicious, then go up and search on the web for the name of the virus to find out what it actually is. But let's just pretend we didn't do any of that. Let's actually go through and find out what is in this actual APK file. So here we are, we have the APK file as downloaded from the internet. It is 12 megabytes. 
I've also downloaded the page about the file so I know what it's about and what it's actually supposed to do. Um, it's supposed to download video for me on an Android platform. So with this APK file, we're now going to pull it apart and have a look inside that. This episode brought to you by the Virus Doctor. Yes, I pulled them apart, but he helps you get rid of them. So following the instructions from the APK tool website, I've copied the script, which is the APK tool.bat file and the APK tool.jar file into my C slash Windows directory. So now it's going to have administrative privileges to run. It's also going to be within the path statement. I'm now going to run that tool against this APK file, running the command APK tool D and then the name of the APK file. So let's go and do that, shall we? Okay, so what I've done is I've gone to the folder that contained the APK file in the command line. At the command line, I've typed in APK tool space D space and then the name of the APK tool. And I'm now letting that run. So that's now running the apk.jar file. And as you can see, it's now extracting things out behind me here. As it pulls that out, I'm going to go and have a look in that folder. Now, it's only got the resources out. Here we go. We've got the rest of it coming out now. So inside the resources are things like logos, XML files, so PNG files, JPEG files, things like that. Not much use to me. And there's also the Smalley files. Now, the Smalley files are actually the classes that are part of the JavaScript, but they are actually in assembly format. So if we go in there and we open up one of the files, which they haven't come down yet. Here we go, Smalley. Uh, com. Just choosing any random file. Here's a Smalley file right here, open with Notepad++. And you'll notice that this is assembly. This is not Java code, but rather it's assembly. Not much use to us. So whilst we do have the contents of this jar, so APK file spat out, we don't quite have it in the format we need. Now, a little thing about APK files. APK files are actually zip files. So if I just put .zip on the end of this, and yes, I wish to change it and right click and extract it to a folder. Out it all comes, which is fantastic because I'm just raw extraction of everything out, including this little file here called classes.dex. They're my class files that I wish to extract. Now, if you compare this folder system with the one that came out from the APK tool, you'll notice certain files and folders are missing. That's what I got from the zip file. So now that I've actually got it out from a zip file, this is the file I'm interested, the classes.dex file. I'm just going to copy that to somewhere where I can play with it. Okay, so the next step is I've got the dex2jar file that I've downloaded from the internet. And inside there, I've just created a batch file to make it easy. But what I'm doing is dex2jar-dex2jar or d2j-dex2jar and then the location of that classes.dex file. So you could run this at the command line if you wish. I've gotten smart and put it in a batch file just so it's easy to run. So that is now going to that dex file and it's going to now create Java class files. So we'll let that go ahead and do its job. So now we have the jar file just for my own neatness i'm going to place that file in with the other files i've been working on here we go there all right so now i've got my actual jar file now that third tool i asked you to download the jdg ui is now a disassembler so let's go and open that file up shall we okay so we've got the java decompiler is now open not showing me very much because i haven't actually opened the jar file yet so let's drag the jar file in. Here we have our expanded jar file. As you can see, this is all now all the classes. So no longer are we in assembly language. We're now in Java. 
In fact, the way this decompiles, it's pretty close to the original Java as per the original person who created it and how they created it. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to search for a few things. So we go up to search and type in air push. And I happen to know that I'm looking for string. And there it is there, and open. And it's gone straight to the unpronounceable uh, node there. Obviously, this looks a bit virusy. And it went down to IBM class. And there's the air push URL. Now, why did I search for air push in particular? Air push is the name of the virus. And it's the name of the thing that I actually located on Semantic's website. So this tells me that this is where the code is going to download those malicious ads using that air push. So taking a bit of information from the internet and combining that with what I find inside the Java file and with search, I've been able to go straight to the malicious piece of code. From here, of course, I can dig a lot further um, and find out what this actually does. So how hard was that to pull apart an APK Java file? Not hard at all. So there's no excuse for you guys out there. If you want to find out what's inside an APK file, um, I'm not going to take it any further than this. If you uh, play with Java a lot or you play with Android, you can take it further than this. But I've just given you all the tools you need to pull apart an APK file to check to see if it's malicious. Then if it is malicious, check to see maybe if you can find out what it does. And then if you really want to, you can pull apart the code. And if you really, really want to, you could probably remove that class or edit it so it's benign and recompile it and you've got yourself an APK file without the malicious content. You can do exactly the same thing if you're looking for crypto jackers and coin miners. Now, coin miners and crypto jackers are legal on the Android Play Store if they're declared up front. If they're not declared up front, then they are actually illegal. So if you happen to come across a crypto jacker or crypto miner within an application that shouldn't be there, um, then Google will want to know about it. Anyway, that was just a short video today just to give you an idea on how to do these things and just to take away some of the mystique. So there we go, we decompiled and we disassembled as well an APK file. Now, leave in the comments anything you want to see decompiled or play with. Tell me what you want to see. I'm starting to look around for ideas, um, but I need more of your input. And also, if you like this content or it's going to help you with anything you do, then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell button so that you know next time I release a video.